Hello everyone. Mm. It's so bitter. Mm -mm -mm. Hello, welcome. Mm. Welcome, everyone. Welcome. Good morning. Sorry, I'm having a little bit of a snap, which is actually bitter. Those are roots. Um, because I've been doing sessions today back to back and I just finished a womb healing. A 45 minutes session and I didn't have time to to take a break a break a break how's everyone how is everyone doing okay so I don't know if you saw the um the the story I, po I posted, sorry, my English today. <sighs> Good morning. Oh, happy birthday. Chick Chick 888. Unstoppable, Zamir. <laughs> I wouldn't expect less from you. Hmm. So I wanted to tie to, to, to tie, to end um, this month uh, of discussion about uh, Lalita with a little bit of womb map. As you know, I don't know if you know, every single goddess, whether Venusian, whether from other star, other dimensions, as people like to call them, reside in the cosmic womb of um, the feminine. Now, men have their equivalent with their lingam and their creative centers. So today, I wanted to tie Lalita and the other Venusians to your womb. I talk about the notion of creation and the chakras and the womb space as being the place where we create wealth, romance, juiciness, every single, well, your favorite word, <laughs> manifestation. It comes from our womb space. So the point, the journey is about awakening the Kundalini, our mother goddess, to burn basically all of the ego's fears, illusions, so that she can travel around our centers and awaken in the crown, okay? This is when you actually experience self-realization. Now there, an, a, a human being will experience several stages of self-realization in a lifetime, okay, in one, in many lifetimes, of course. But the point is to allow this energy to travel all the way up and burn. I wanted to use the word kill, but yeah, <laughs> don't be shocked, yes, kill egos, illusions, fears, things like that. And in our Holy Grail, which actually in the Gnostic texts, you know, every single text you will read about um, the priestess Sophia, 
Actually, not every single one. Uh, I read one, you know, the, the, the Gnostic Bible. But when you channel Magda, Mary Magdalene, um, the notion of the Holy Grail, which is our most sacred thing that we hold as women is here in our womb. And it connects here to the grail of men, which is here, you know, the, the thymus, the agmedalus, okay? This is the male womb and here the female womb. Yes, I called it the womb. That's what it is actually. Um, and on this holy grail, this womb space, it has several points. These points are portals, actual portals that allow us to, I'm trying to make it not too esoteric, okay? But basically there is going to be, there is a Venusian in every single portal. Some people call them gates as well, I've seen that. Um, every single portal. So today I'm going to, you know, not going into detail because this is the work that I do in the womb healing session to identify which of your goddesses is wounded, basically preventing you from moving forward, from self-realizing and actually living in harmony with your sacred purpose. So all of the traumas revolving around scarcity, poverty, blockages, um, love, romance, beauty, uh, the attainment of the goddess aspect of ourselves, you know, living in our throne, it's going to happen here in the room. So the first portal is actually at, can I say those words here on Instagram without getting blocked or whatever reported? The first gate is the gate of Parvati, goddess Parvati and Ezulifreda, okay? It is, at the petals of the yoni, which is basically the clitoris. So Erzuli sits there and she's the guardian of divine entitlement, playfulness, being tempered, self-love, like a very youthful, unjudgmental self-love. Um, and when you have a wounded Erzuli on the first portal, you will have issues of distrust in men, betrayal. I kind of wrote it down so I don't forget because I want to make the today's life live a little quick. Um, suspicion, you know, being suspicious, sorry, about men, you know, like not trusting men, not trusting that men are loyal because this is about relationships, okay? Everything we do is about the relationship between our feminine and our masculine. So Erzuli and Parvati are about devotion and about loyalty. So it starts about this self-love aspect that we have and the notion that you're going to get loyalty out of the universe and all of the masculine counterparts. And that is why when I told you about um, Lalita, you know, doing the honoring of Lalita, I told you to start, and, and I even put it on the website in the description, um, honoring Lalita, you start with the Parvati Mantra, the devotion mantra. Um, you, if you are a daughter of Erzuli, or if you have a journey of being overworked, not knowing when, you know, not being pampered by life, not having ever any type of vacation, being a slave to life. And I have clients who, who are rich by any sort of um, logical and human definition who manifest a lot of money, but who are still slave of the system, slave of money. Um, I had a client the other day who had, I think, about 400 and something days at her job that she never took because she just never has time. It's never good enough. She's a lawyer and she's in her masculine. She's in the defensive. She lacks security because she feels that if she's not at her job, 
if she's not there, she misses one day, even though she has those. Again, we're gonna, my goodness. Are we here? Hold on a second, I'm gonna call, I'm gonna see. Elisha? Elisha? It was my daughter calling me. Um, so, she's there, there's me. So when you wanna work with her, even when you get the potion, this is where your womb work will start, focusing on the first gate or the first portal, which is where Erzuli resides, where devotion to yourself resides. And if you are on um, a journey of sacred union, it starts, it starts there. It starts on the honoring of the entrance of the yoni, which is basically the garden, the clitoris. Please don't block me or whatever because it has happened in the past. Um, so you start the journey and usually when I do, actually when I do this, the session, we travel. We start actually from the cosmic womb all the way to basically all the gates. And the second gate is Ator and Mary Magdalene. Fertility, pure uh, fertility, having a womb which is a good soil for creation, um, having all of the attributes. That is why, you know, this, this is a necklace that I made for, um, actually, which was curated <laughs> through me by a Thor. You, your body, your temple body, has to be a fertile ground for creation. You have to walk, talk, look like, be your goddess embodied. So when you show up to the world, in order to receive, and this is really much tied to the law of preparation, the soil, you have to basically create, connect so much with your essence to the point where you create an auspicious temple that is fertile enough to bloom so that the seed blooms. Second gate, that is where your G spot is. Everything about us is sacred. Every single aspect of our womb and our intimacy, our sacred sexuality. Um, if it has been misused, given away for the sake of, you know, at the door, the second, the second gate is about abandonment. Abandonment. When you love things outside of you or people outside of you, or you care more about the opinion, the judgment of others, therefore inflicting self-judgment, you abandon yourself. And as per the law of correspondence, what happens spiritually? You experience the fear of abandonment. You experience everything sort of you, you feel like you're committing, especially if you started to work, you know, with Parvati and Erzuli Freda on the first portal, you know, the clitoris and your yoni, your womb has started, your goddess has started to awaken, you know, traveling already. You started the work, but if you, if yourself, you know, you as a divine being, you do not create the fertile soil in order for the alchemical work. I'm, you know, we're gonna get there at some point, you know, because alchemy happens above. If the soil is not good, meaning that you have been neglecting yourself because you want the love of others, the approval of others, you show up in the world, not, you know, not being you, not looking like you, not wearing, you know, your goddess attributes, not smelling, looking, speaking, being a goddess, you know, you neglect the ground, you neglect the soil, it dries up. What happens? You feel that you give 
too much. You give so much, but never receive anything back in return. And as a matter of fact, when people are done taking from you and you have nothing else to give, they leave you. And I find for my client that it happens a lot when already at the base, at the Azuli and Parvati, the clitoris, you know, the first portal, they are not, they haven't, they haven't dealt with what it means to be in spiritual self-love, spiritual self-seduction. So you go from betrayal and distrust in the masculine. And because that energy already is an energy of, you know, I'm, I'm not as important as I come second. I'm not the priority. On the second portal, which is where the G spot is, you experience abandonment, period. Going up third gate where you have your cervix, you have the queen of Sheba, Zeba. And here we have basically, um, this is where um, the alchemical process is starting. This is energetically where sacred menstruation starts. This is purely, what did I call it? Yeah, this is the initiation. The queen of Sheba is about, you've nurtured yourself, you love yourself, you put yourself first, but it's not a mental process. It is actually like light bulbs. It is the goddess that you have to awaken. Boom, boom. You get to Zeba, the queen of Sheba, and you start your initiation. Initiation to discover what are your divine talents? What is your sacred mission? Remember, even if the, the story of uh, the Bible is purely flawed from the original versions, you still remember the fact that Zeba is a monarch. You know, this is where spiritual royalty starts. The notion of divine bloodline. It starts with the, um, the claiming, the knowing. The Queen of Sheba already has all of her treasures. She has a queendom, which actually is the most fructuous, the most abundant in East Africa when she starts the journey to meet Solomon. She goes to Solomon as her equal. She goes to learn more from the masculine because this was what, this was, what was missing in her journey, but she is whole already. She doesn't have the illusion of needing someone in order to be, which is actually what sacred union is. You know, being one with your masculine and feminine in you, but dwelling in your feminine powers. So you're not in need to be masculine or to thrive in a masculine world. You are your own feminine and you have this equilibrium within you. And when you work with Zeba, with the Queen of Sheba, it is really to awaken your self, your psychic talents, clairvoyance. If you wanna be more intuitive, receive those messages, those divine messages, see, hear. And she also is going to help you, you know, when you are, when you wanna travel for business. You know, I have a couple of influencers, travel influencers who have done amazingly well with uh, Zeba for the past year, year, year and a half. When you want to travel for business, when you want to um, settle in a different country, when you want to um, migrate, you know, when something relating to your wealth and business, being fearless about going, being knowing that you're protected in your home and things are going to be amazing because you're going somewhere to bring your abilities. You're not going to look for a job, even though, you know, a lot of people travel to get another job, but you go there knowing that you will be needed. My daughter, my daughter. Elisha? 
Elisha, tu peux appeler ta soeur, s'il te plaît, elle n'arrête pas de m'appeler. S'il te plaît, chérie. Apologize, apologize. What does you sacred makeup mean? Um, where was I? My daughter keeps calling me. Maybe she needs me. Her sister is gonna call her. Elisha, show you that, sir. Okay, she's right there. Okay, so third gate service, Zeba. Okay, um, you go because you add value. You go because you are needed. Okay, when the sacred union happens between the Queen of Sheba and Solomon, Solomon needs her as as much or even more than she needs him. She felt that she was going through that initiation, but in the end, she's the one blessing him. He picks her and he even, you know, does all kinds of tricks in order to get her. So she's so balanced that she goes to a man who is the most powerful man at that time, then the wisest man, her male God equivalent, and yet she destabilizes him because goddesses create, okay? Masculinity, sacred masculine energy is about consciousness and it needs that soil. It needs the feminine aspect of creation, the waters, the emotions in order to brew and create this alchemical process. So cervix, you're going up. So the cervix, you know, we're no longer in the yoni space. We're now in the womb. We're now in the cup of the grail. And we get to the fourth gate. The fourth gate is the bottom of the womb. Um, you know, how can I describe it? If you are a woman who's a little fleshy like me, <laughs> um, it is basically the, the little round aspect, you know, of your, you know, when you breathe in into your womb, you know, it, this is the part that gets engorged and that fourth portal is crucial this is where your goddess your own goddess resides this is the portal leading you to your ancestors bloodline to your basically how can i say this is the portal that links you, the umbilical cord to your ancestors. When you don't have that, when you don't have, and that's why my portion on Wiri Shakti is about this, you know, the journey of the sacred feminine, you know, from the first portal all the way to the fourth and up to now create all of the circumstances that you need. If your goddess is not awakened, there's nothing nothing you can have you can do you know and that's why um the the little flaw that i see with indigenous practices you know is the worship of goddesses and deities but you don't see actually the lives of those people transform they're devoted but in a brainwashed way you know they have not awakened themselves they are not masters of their own creation of their own life, their double, their goddess, you know, what we call for us their genie is there on that fourth gate at the bottom of the cup. If you don't have that, you don't have roots. If you don't have that, you can't meet your goddess and she can't direct you. You're going to be like not knowing, even if the, even if Lalita gives you, you know, guidance, you are not grounded. You don't have the ancestors' roots. You are not awakened. That goddess aspect of you, her seed is there at the fourth gate. It's crucial. 
in your journey. When I talk about awakening, when I talk about embodying, et cetera, et cetera, it's about that journey. It's about awakening her. It's about burning all of the, you know, all of the false programming, you know, the ones that I talked about. Betrayal. When, you, when you're done, Kundalini is going up. So you heal the betrayal programming. You heal the um, abandonment programming. You heal, you know, the notion of not being whole when you get to Zeba, the notion of not being needed, the notion of not being your own, your own um, royalty, your own spiritual monarch. So it's a process. Some people, based on their karma, will go a little bit all over the place. They will work, you know, because um, some goddesses are more famous than others. Some people may be like, oh, I want to work with Oshun because Oshun is about love. And, you know, you, the symptom is usually the excuse to enter the realm of the goddess when you can't keep a man, when, um, you know, no matter what you do, you are not creative. You don't know how to receive that money. You don't know how to create. Or sometimes you have those curses, those family ancestors curses that are here. And you, you, you don't know how to deal with them. You, it's like you're going against the current all the time, like a lab rat. You're doing everything, but somehow you're not seeing transformation. Usually you get, you know, you go to a goddess, which is an excuse, but then you have to go back to the basis. The point is when Kundalini, when goddess, cosmic mother is meeting with you and going up to self-realization, you have to basically clear everything. That's how you become a celestial being. That's how you become a goddess because a goddess will not have toxicity. And the work as humans, you know, in this human experience is to do the clearing all the time. You clear, you know, so when the, when the you know, the moon is um, from the full moon to the new moon, moon going down, you do all of the, your cleansing rituals. You do, you, re, you know, release all of your attachments. You work on your fears. You work on, you know, identifying, you know, meeting your egos and letting go, letting go, letting go. And then you, you get, you know, to the new moon leading to the full moon. And then you do all of your manifestation rituals. That's when you do the honoring of the goddesses, you know, like to attract, to be and manifest. But for me, it's never, ever, ever about manifesting. It's about transforming. It's about becoming. It's about being. Um, otherwise, you know, you just do like all of those people who um, do spell to like to fix little problems, you know, like I'm going to go to this deity to, because I, I need to pay my rent. But then you haven't solved the scarcity programming. So you may, the deity may help you a little bit. Okay, we're going to, you know, you're going to pay your rent miraculously. But then have you healed that programming? Have you healed that implant? Is your portal clean and clear? You know, is your portal energetically creating what you're supposed to create? You know, so you have to do everything. So I talk too much because <laughs> I have to go. Um, fourth gate, then you go to today's top, well, the topic of this whole month, which is Lalita Tripura Sundari on your right ovary. Your right ovary is the seat, the portal of Lalita and Ishtar. So, <laughs> two Venusians who are going to help you heal programming of divine entitlement and sacred unions and sacred sexuality. So, when I talked about Parvati and devotion, we're talking about you're starting the journey. And people who are on there, um, who have experienced um, twin flames, for example, will know that. You need Kundalini to really do her job. You need to go through that pain. You need to acknowledge all of the aspects that make you not enough, that make you crave that masculine, so much that you feel like you're not enough or you're not whole. It's a journey of becoming whole, becoming divine, becoming a goddess. Because, you know, what are we? It's the law of one. You are the seed of the God, goddess, creator, the source. So when you're on your um, right ovary, you're going to have a lot of programming of the sacred whore. Um, issues with... Um, 
you know, the vixen, you know, hypersexualization. You're going to have an issue with being a trophy wife, which for me, you know, a woman, a sacred feminine has to be a spiritual whore to her masculine. Because if you're not that, you know, actually whore um, is a transliteration of the word cave, har. So whore is not actually, oh my God, I hope I'm not getting because I, I heard that they're becoming a little strict. Um, it means cave, cave, the womb, okay? Being in a place that is moist and that creates, you know, the, where the soil is fertile, you know, auspicious to creation. So you have to be open enough. And that's why the journey from the base, you know, the first portal all the way up is important because um, when you're on your Lalita, you understand that we live in a world that is a Maya, an illusion. And everyone is feeding everyone's illusion. Your community, your family, your parents, the people who love you, the people who don't love you, and ultimately you, your own self-judgment, um, not wanting to shine, not wanting to make other people look bad, uh, or sometimes fear of failure, fear of, oh my God, if I succeed, I'm gonna change, my life is gonna change. How is my entourage going to take it? How am I able to live or all of the programmings of, um, wealth is a bad thing. Money is a bad thing. That masculine, beautiful masculine money energy. You have still a lot of people, even though they don't say it out loud, they still are either this in dislike of the money energy or in fear, in fear of the masculine, in fear of, you know, almost like masculinity, sacred masculine or toxic masculinity, I want to say, <laughs> is a threat. So, what do they do? They become defensive. Um, you have, I don't know, an example, you know, you get a compliment, hi, you, you look beautiful today. And you have some women still today who are gonna say, oh, you know, this is an old thing, nothing special. You removed your crown and you took yourself out of a pedestal. This is a reaction uh, that may seem very insignificant, but in reality, it has spiritual value because it is your subconscious that allowed your ego to speak and not your goddess to speak. Because a goddess is a goddess. You like her, you don't like her, she's a goddess. It's a, it's a divine spirit. A divine spirit will not cease. I mean, if you, if you think of fairies, is a fairy going to stop being a fairy because you find that fairies are... Well, capricious, fairies are very capricious, <laughs> very emotional. You know, when there's a full moon and you have a lot of fairies around you, you're gonna react very emotionally. Um, people who are um, um, influenced by um, astrology, you know, like I've heard a lot of, oh, the retrograde, the retrograde. Um, Fairies are gonna make you very emotional because they're gonna play tricks on you. You know, they're the ones who go around and make sure that, you know, that retrograde is touching whomever is still not a master of their creation. But anyways, Lalita is about, I know I'm on the throne. I will make compromises, even though, even though it's not about being arrogant again. If you're a divine being, you have to translate that into everyday life. You walk with your head high, but you're still humble because you know that you meet divinity. That is why in Hindu mysticism, the first things that they teach us or that they taught us was namaste, the word namaste, the divine in me. I mean, it has many, many meanings, but it means the divine in me sees the divine in you. So you choose to see the other without judgment of their human flaws because you understand that that seed of the god goddess is in you as it is on them as well so working on lalita is very much you know in material terms it's very much about status it's about improving your status it's about improving your marriage it's about improving your relationships you know lalita is about being a trophy feminine you know she can be 
she has the ability because Lalita is also the first portal, you know, after the Kundalini starts. And we talked about the soil, the fertile soil on the Thor, you know, on the G spot and going. And then Lalita is where well, alchemy happens. Alchemy. She is transformation. She makes you someone completely different. You work on Lalita, you honor Lalita, you, you live, breathe, dream, call upon her, you live with her, she will transform you. You will think differently. People will think you're crazy. People will think you're conceited. People will think you're arrogant. Um, if you go back to your womb and connecting to you, to the goddess you, it will never be about arrogance. So whatever they will say, it will not touch you because you are on your secret mission. Um, so Lalita is very, 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 um, she's a mature type of spiritual goddess. When you get to Lalita, it's about, and, and, and Ishtar, of course, that aspect is about, I'm a sexy goddess and I own it and I'm not reckless. When you're right, you know, the work that I do in my womb, um, my womb healing sessions, um, when your right ovary is wounded, that means you haven't healed your cosmic mother, you haven't healed your trauma of you even being in your mother's womb. We go, we go very far sometimes to, you know, past lives, but also inside of the womb itself. You know, what is passed on genetically, you know, was your mother in good spirit? What was the thing she was saying to you or to herself? Did she pass down fears or glory? Um, because that pedestal, and that's why, you know, Lalita is right after the, um, the fourth portal of your own, your own goddess, ancestors, roots. So it's about that foundation. When you don't have that, your Lalita is going to be wounded. You're going to be in the comfort zone. It means that from, I don't know, year one to year 10, People will come to you and be like, oh, amazing. You haven't changed. It feels so comforting. You still live in the same house. Oh my God, you still have that car? Oh, I remember when you used to wear that dress. You have same salary, same boyfriend. Usually also Lalitas don't get, um, wounded Lalitas don't get married because, um, or they never feel like they have a true partner because they're by themselves all the time. You know, they're not on the pedestal, even if they're married and usually they're not. But when they are married, they're in a, they're, they're the, the housework, the slave, the maid of the house. Meaning that they will be the man and the woman in the relationship. They will clean, but also do like mechanical stuff. Sorry to be stereotypical because I know that women, me included, sometimes I like to do manual things, making potions mainly, but, <laughs> um, but yes, when you have a wounded Lalita, you're never on the pedestal, never. You, you throw a party, you know, even just like a Sunday gathering with family. Um, you're the kind of person when they come, you know, when your guests come or whatever, you open the door and you're dressed like a maid. You're always like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm still cleaning. You know, I'm, Ah, oh, but please, you know, sit down, make yourself comfortable. Um, <laughs> it's your home and you're not on the throne in your home. You know what I mean? This is a wounded Lalita. This is the one who's like, you know, no promotion at work, um, no transformation, no alchemical transformation, usually hiding behind her fears and making excuses. <gasps> wounded Lalitas are so difficult for me in the sessions because um, the Venusian in me, um, I never want to be brutal, um, but wounded Lalitas are delirious, you know, because they're so certain. They're programming, you know, because their Erzuli and their Pravati is wounded there are thor wounded i mean a thor you have to dress like your goddess dresses 
okay? You have to dress your signature. So you, her Thor wounded because she dressed like, she would put like her hair not done, you know, her hair. It's not about aesthetics, okay? It's about spirituality. Your hair is your antenna. If you don't care for your antenna, your electricity doesn't go to the upper realms. So everything I say, please don't take it like as a superficial human. Start hearing in spiritual terms what I'm saying to you. It's not about looking good because looking good is again a spiritual, a, a superficial concept because usually it is attached to looking like. The point is not for you to look like, you know, the point for you is to be yourself, but to care about yourself, your temple so much. I mean, imagine, translate your body temple as an actual building. Not caring for your body temple means you're not washing your, your temple, you know? You're not cleaning, you're not like sweeping the floor. You're not painting whenever, you know, there's like a crack on the wall. You're not, uh, like a regular temple, how do you make a temple holy? Why do I do Venus smoke on your yoni? Why do you sit over your yoni? You know, if you go even to anyone who used to be a Christian, what do they do when you go to church or when you go to the mosque? Incense, the notion of air, the notion of your intentions going up and having, you know, being a portal, a vortex, bringing heaven on earth. That's why we light incense. We light incense to shape shift to quantum shift so that we are in the divine that is why i do the venus smoke to you know to my clients you have to do the venus smoke because your yoni is the holy the, the the holy grail it is the entrance of your temple if the entrance of your temple where you create your magic is not holy i don't care if you're a billionaire you look rotten your experience is miserable you will have like 20 actors all cheating on you and then moving on to the like uh, uh, the new girl and marrying them. I mean, I don't care. It's not about like flood money and wealth manifestation. It is still about being holy. So um, that's why Lalita. So it's really a journey. You know, when you're at Lalita, it means that we have worked on or you have worked on all of the other photos. And then you go up, okay, in the, what is it? Lalita is on the ovary, on the upper aspect upper side, the diaphragm, a little below the diaphragm. It is the gate of Noon, goddess, Egyptian goddess of the, the cosmic, the cosmic, the actual womb of creation. So remember I told you it's a journey, right? If everything is wounded, your lalita is toxic, you get to Noon, Noon is what? Cosmic creation. Everything you create turns to dust. You have a success. Everyone is talking bad about you. You never get to actually enjoy the fruit of your creation. Or you're tired, or you get sick, you're exhausted, or you're doing something, everyone likes it, but you're miserable because you're too tired to do it, especially because you have a wounded Lalita anyways, and you're the maid you know, the, the, the cleaning lady of your own creation. So never ever, you put other people on the Lalita pedestal because you want to make their experience amazing. So of course, noon, your creation is absolutely, like you won't even feel it. This is how you have a lot of feminines who feel like a failure. And they get stuck in programming of logic, intelligence like i know no 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 you won't tell me otherwise they will justify to you with logic why it is morally superior to be ugly to be um humble to um care for a man like it's your child to not take money you know from a man even though you give him everything you know, your entire magic, you're completely depleted. And yet those women will tell you, no, you're a bad woman if you're a trophy because her Lalita is wounded anyways. So her noon is just taking all of that in. And those women, they're very difficult women. 
those women are women who are a lot in the programming of masculine, very defensive, fighters, um, arguing all the time, or, you know, being like stiff, their energy is very stiff. Why? Because there's no fluidity. Kundalini is not traveling. Kundalini is, like, is not like that. Kundalini is still there. So the whole grail is stuck. Everything is rigid. The fears are getting stronger and stronger. The egos, castle, like they're getting stronger, stronger. They're becoming truths. That's why you go from programming egos to like actual implants. And when you come to someone like me or another healer who does that, who works like womb healing, we actually like manually like remove, like unlock, you know, those implants. They're actually inside of you. And usually we have to remove them and replace them so that, you know, again, the soil is fer fertile. Yes. So that the manifestation of you, your self-realization, it's just harmony. And you know when it's harmony. You know when it's harmony. You're just flourishing, blo blossoming, everything. Goes, you're walking like oh, on a breeze, you know? And when you're wounded, even sometimes, you know, you're, at, you're working on your, on, you know, you're, you're working with Azuli and your Azuli is thriving, amazing. And then you haven't dealt with the other stuff. And then you have to, have, you're going to have the voice of guilt. Like, don't do this. People are going to look bad at you. Why are you so happy? you know, the voice of ego, you know, you have to be very vigilant when you're on a spiritual journey because the point of an ego is to stay alive. So their job, those monsters, is to make sure that you believe in scarcity. They make it so real for you. They make it happen around you in, in your material world so that you feel that because it is like 3D, it is reality. They make you stop believing that Alchemy, alchemy is one of your powers. I'm gonna end um, the, so we're on the seventh portal, left ovary with Oshun. Ah, so this is the portal of receiving. Receiving, laying down and receiving. I receive because I know I'm sexy. I know my sexuality is sacred. I know I am adorned like my goddess wants me to. I know I eat, breathe, speak only words of blessing. I know I'm a miracle to the world. I know I live on my throne, Lalita. I am on the pedestal. I am the goddess worshiped by gods. I get to that portal, the, 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 the diaphragm portal, you know, being that so it's already everything is done the alchemical process has been done by the diaphragm by noon you have created you are you are on self-realizing already so what else do you have to do some people get stuck at noon and i have been actually guilty of that on some occasion because alchemy may take human time and when you allow ego that is why every day you wake up, it's your first day of manifestation. Every day is a routine. Every day you wake up and you're like, what is my spiritual routine? What are my spiritual tools? What am I saying? What am I using? How am I doing it? This is the aspect of sacred masculine in you, being like, what are the actions I'm taking every day to be supported so that my feminine just thrives? And then when you get to your shun, if your womb of creation is amazing, all you have to do is wait, wait, surrender. You receive everything that is divinely yours, you receive. And the reason why a Venusian will, oh, me, you know, I embody all of them at this point. And I'm not young, I'm 41. So I've dealt with, well, not for a long time, but because I don't have a choice, I see them. So it's not even an option for me, but I, I walk my path. I speak my path. I dress like my path. I go to people, I'm always me. My discourse doesn't change because it comes from me, creation. 
And as a womb healer and as a womb goddess, as a Venusian, that is why we use potions, jewelry, to look like our signature and to be in sacred energy all the time. And I haven't had time because actually I'm a little later. I mean, I thought I was going to finish 20 minutes ago, but next time I will tell you, maybe. We'll see because I wanted to start with Oshun next time. Um, but each and every single portal also has a specific, um, what do you call it? Precious material. You know, rubies, pearls, etc. Okay, diamond, of course, being the cosmic mother, the eighth portal, and that is why you know, in my products, it's really some. I'm doing this live, and maybe this time I'm gonna. Hopefully, it's gonna save. Um, I want to make this live really to the new Daikinis who may be confused, like who is this Miss Pravala? Why is she called Miss Pravala? Miss Pravala is one of my names given in initiation, um, Kavala. Do I have to go to the story, the actual story? Many of you know the story. Um, the notion of spiritual beauty, spiritual hair. The time when I was named Miss Pravala is when I lost my hair for the third time um, to illness and I had to like shave my hair completely. And at the ashram, they actually baptized me. Um, Pravala is one of the avatars of, uh, of Goddess Lakshmi. So that was my actually my first baptism, my first name. And then throughout my, my own channeling, when I go to Venus, to my realm, I'm called something else. When I do my ancestors ritual, I have my name there. Everywhere you go, you have to have your passcode, your name, your signature. Um, but Anyways, coming back, someone who doesn't know me, when I'm talking about embodying the goddess, and I've had an, I've received emails and DMs about it. That's why I'm going to wrap up by saying this. The reason why some people are focused and uh, are confused, the newcomers, it is because they see that I make potions and they see that I do healing sessions and they see that I do uh, jewelry. Um, all kinds of stuff. And I also speak about ancestors, spirituality, goddess spirituality. It is all in one. Really, um, I'm a womb healer. I'm a womb reader. You would send me a photo of your yoni that I would tell you your life story. I connect to the womb. I heal the womb and I make it powerful so that you have the fertile soil to actually self-realize. Um, it's about wealth. You know, that's why I am the luxury spiritual because, you know, my incarnation in this lifetime, which I hope is my last, <laughs> um, is really about setting the record straight about the divine feminine and the divine entitlement that we have because patriarchy and now it's almost like on the revolving door, you know, like the programming happens. It's not even anyone above us doing it now. It's people feeding toxic um, programming to one another. You go to the media, you go to TikTok, you go to you know, Instagram, you're going to be influenced and you're going to be um, all of those egos of envy, you know, comparison, not understanding that your journey is your own, your success is your own, the notion of, even of success, you know, is personal. Success means self-realization. Success doesn't mean making $20 million. It's about manifesting your wealth, the wealth that is yours and claiming the wealth that is yours. However, we incarnated on this earth not to suffer. We incarnated, that's why the Kundalini awakening process is about sacred union, sacred realization. It is basically the notion that if you are a divine being, you're an infinite being, you have your, your, your wealth at your disposal, there's no reason why you should not be thriving. Every single human being should be thriving. The problem is we're stuck in comparison. We're stuck in believing that if I make money, somehow I took money from you, not understanding that the moment you tap into your wealth, it's your vault. It's your vault. You just need to crack the code. 
by connecting to your divinity. Once you crack the code, it's your wealth. It's yours. No one can take it from you. The only thing people can do, knowingly or unknowingly, some people actually, like I said, mean well. Your parents sometimes mean well when they say, oh, don't quit your job to start a business because all they know is working for someone, going to a nine to five because this is the model of safety. But then in terms of your spirit, you know, you're trapping your spirit because someone who is not you, someone is not, who's not connected to their divinity is telling you how to live your life. So you're trapping yourself because you are believing, believing the false truths. So goddesses are about sexual energy. We are about sexual healing. And it is only when our sexual energy is optimal, when we are no longer trapped in the fears of the mental, when we have killed our egos, when we have done the sacred self, you know, practices, um, sacred sexuality, et cetera, et cetera, that we can thrive in the money that we have. And once you reach your shun, you're working on your shun, or maybe you're a daughter of a shun even, um, but like I said, you don't have to be a daughter of any goddess because you're for sure a daughter of one. Um, it is a journey that you have to take in your womb in order to eradicate all of the false truths, all of the implants, what I call, you know, because I see them, all of those monsters, get rid of them. You're never going to kill them because energy doesn't die. However, once you remove those implants, unfortunately, they're going to go to another vehicle that is auspicious to it. If someone is in toxicity and if someone believes in logic, if someone is trapped in the system or in the institutions or the belief that, you know, I should want small because, you know, because of, you know, I'm a woman, I'm this, you know, look at me, I'm African. Can, I mean, I was born already with all of the disadvantages, you know, if you look at it through um, society. Woman, Black, African, yet I'm here today. I'm a goddess, period. That's my race, as far as I'm concerned. You know, of course, there's my ancestry. It's important because I come here today because those powers are mine because I connect to my guides. So it is a holistic approach to living your spirituality. Okay. Okay. It's 630 here. I have to go, you know, I have Samba class. Um, I will try to save this live. Thank you so much for all of you for joining. I hope you enjoyed the live. Um, I will let you know in the stories, uh, what we're going to talk about next, um, Monday. I wanted to start on Oshun actually, uh, but let me know it's either Oshun or Erzuli. So Erzuli would be actually logical. Now that I think of it, I may start with Erzuli so that we go through the gates uh, one by one. Let's do, let's do Erzuli Freda next Monday, okay? So we start at the first gate. Thank you so much. Manifest lavish imperial opulence, okay? Say those words, I'm entitled to it. You are a goddess, you are born a goddess, okay? I love you.
Ok. Bye.